Hello world, and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Mod Spotlights. This is the second one. So, yeah, cool. And today we'll be looking at Mechanical Mouse Industries, MMI. This is a pack of, well, it's three separate packs. It is the Satellite Pack, the Payload Pack, and the Cathane Pack. And we're going to be going through them. First off, we're going to take a look at the Payload Pack. Now I like my rockets looking nice and pointy and very shrouded, so you know this uh, this suits me just fine. Uh, start off with the bottom. You got all these quite modular pieces. You see, you have this is a standard two meter to one meter adapter down here. There's also a straight up two meter version of it, and then your standard issue straight piece as you would expect. Now. For those wider payloads, however, they have created this sort of bulbous one as well. I've just done these halves so you can see the nice textures. There's very nice detailed textures on these. Very, very shiny, very posh. Look at that micro detail. So, oh, very nice. This uh, this uh, set of series of mods is, has a lot of plans ahead of it by the looks. They've got little rovers and all sorts. And we'll go into what Cathane is soon. But uh, these are all sort of modular, so you can stack parts on them. And we've got three different types of cone. We've got this kind of beveled cone here. We've got this incredibly pointy one here. I like that one a lot. <laughs> it's tiny. And we've got sort of your classic round. Your classic round. So you can adapt that a fair bit. So you can have something with a wide ass, but very small top very nice you've also got these uh, just chassis pieces these little hull pieces whatever you want to call them just uh, spacers filler whatever you wish that is basically it for the payload pack now going on to the satellite pack I'll be able to show you a satellite up there at the moment but uh, basically you get all sorts of stuff like uh, this little thin thin hull piece and that goes for the little fuel tanks and stuff because this mod adds a lot of these little radial fuel tanks there's the RCS liquid fuel batteries yes this uh, requires an electrical plug-in this all runs on plug-ins except for the payload fairings so we've got an ion engine here and batteries to run it we also have uh, some relatively cool solar panels to look at yeah and they come in this folded up little package and they fold out when they're staged and you can right click on them, they've got a little UI we've also got these uh, very compact little lander legs and I'll show you this all in action in just a moment and here we are at my Keth scanner probe now what is Keth? Kethane is a gas or something, it's a fuel that randomly generates every time you uh, load and you know run a new persistence file. To, if you clean your game, it will generate a new random map, so it will all be different on the moon in Minus. And you'll have to use the uh, probe or satellite of some sort, some kind, and find pockets of this gas and mine it. And then you can, by a process, convert it into either RCS fuel or liquid fuel which is pretty damn cool because it's not everywhere you have to actually search for it and I like that a lot it's a great feature so first off we'll go off go on uh, around how that actually gets done I'm trying to find the little piece on here actually and I can't find it because I'm a moron I guess um, yeah first off we got it runs on mechjeb this piece here this is your command pod an unmanned command pod uh, we've got the solar panels which are feeding our batteries here these fuel the ion engine which is uh, really cool Aha, how cool is that sound effects lovely very nice we right click and we can deploy our solar panels like that and they just fold out in this very accordion fashion Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And what else have we got? Ah, yes, you see, we got a tab up here, Cathane Controller. 
Now this is a catch-all menu here that when you have the Cathane controller, which is a radially attached part, I've got it on here somewhere, I just can't exactly remember where I placed it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, basically what you've got here is you've got detection, pumping, extracting and converting. It's your processes. This one, this probe is designed to detect. Now out here we've got start detecting and it was uh, start detect, you click and it runs it helps if you're orbiting a planet. Now a little bug that I discovered I'm sure other people discovered it much to uh, their own hatred um, using the maximum speed warp time thing uh, things forget where they're orbiting. I was doing something else, this was on rails and uh, next thing I knew it flew off of the 50 kilometer moon orbit and well it's out here by the sun, hi. Yeah, all that junk's over there. Shame. But what this does is this gives you kind of like a little trail of where uh, where you're going around the moon or Minmus and it has two different tones of bleeping to indicate whether it's found something or not. When it, once it's found something it gives you details on like you know the, the estimated volume and such like that. And you can also deactivate the sound if it's annoying you which is a really nice feature. Then of course we've got pumping, extracting, converting and I'll go into that soon. This little thing down here is the detection head for detecting because each one of these things, they just, these just aren't randomly working. See? Cathane extractor not found because I don't have an extractor module attached to this. Converter not found because I don't have a converter attached. To actually have each one of these working, you have to have the attached to the vehicle. They're all different parts, and uh, I shall show you them uh, in the next portion. So let's say we've been orbiting and we've discovered a pocket. Now we have to go check it out. That's where we lead to my cathane mining probe. And here we are on the moon in a lovely little crater and as you can see there's a ton of debris off in the distance, all these various markers multiple probes trying to land on sources uh, the solar panels are actually just for show on this this is uh, this, uh, this has the little liquid engine here uh, from the satellite pack and also these tiny little lander legs from the mechanical mouse industries satellite pack. The satellite pack is not being updated so it's as is however some of the parts will be migrated over into future projects by the MMI team. Now on this one we have this is the Keth controller where are you? Huh, I can't find it again. It's on here I know it is. I'm an idiot. Ah there it is. This tiny little thing down here this is the cathane, you know, the cathane controller unit. This, this, this is what gives you this, uh, this uh, information panel here, this control panel. And what we have now is the pump and the extractor. So first of all, before we can extract something, we need these. These are empty tanks. You get the cathane tanks. There's uh, inline one meter ones as well which uh, is on the back of this rover over here which is parked. The idea being is that you bring this rover here with a minimal amount of fuel and to keep it running around you uh, have to mine for the fuel because uh, you can't really move this thing around very well once it's run out of fuel and you can't really move it around very well anyway because it runs on these bloody landing gear <laughs> that's all a bit dodgy. And this green unit here with little things on is a uh, converter which allows you to convert the cathane from this tank into usable fuel. Now something to note, you have to actually have somewhere for the fuel to go. So I've got these, uh, where is it, as you got the orange, yellow and green. The green are cathane extra tanks, the yellow are RCS tanks and the orange is liquid fuel. That's why it's pumped to the engine. Now. If I wanted to say convert this to RCS, I'd have to have room in these tanks because it would go from cathane tank, convert into the RCS tank, which would be empty, or have room in. That's how that works. It doesn't convert the interior of this to RCS. So hmm, it's an interesting thing. You also need on both vehicles a pump 
if you're pumping it between vehicles, and a cathane controller on all cathane running things. That's what gives you the control. So let's go into this, shall we? First off, we've detected it, and we should be able to get the sound up on this one. This is the sound that's detected. It's given you the last node longitude and latitude. Here we go, and it's about one and a half meters below the surface. 33 carbon liters, whatever the hell. Yeah, and this little map, it's kind of simple. I would like this map to be a bit bigger, like I could extend it or something so I can actually see. It's kind of a bit useless for me, really. And we're going to have to pump some stuff. <laughs> Not pumping, so let's pump. No, sorry, I'm being an idiot. You can't pump unless you've extracted it, because I've got none on me. So let's deploy the extractor, shall we? Here comes the extractor. Very detailed. The drill is going to go down to a length of well, one and a half meters, I guess. There it is, keeps going and going. 2.6, it's gone right down. And we're just going to be filling up our tank with the uh, cathane. Uh, there it is, it's filling up. Which one is it? That's the one. See, it's filling up with cathane. And uh, I'm just going to let this fill up, and we'll be back. Okay, so we've uh, filled up most of, well, we filled up two and a half tanks, uh, 500, just over 500 liters of cathane fuel. Now we need to pump it over to the rover. And so we'll close that and we'll pump it. We've got no converter on this, so it doesn't work. We select that, and as you can see, cathane on board, target, blah, 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 of 900 liters, and then cathane on thingy. And it's just uh, mm, this green beam is a little weird for my liking but uh, you know it's a good indicator of what's going on if this looked like some magical floating uh, fuel line just like literally one of these fuel lines like superimposed I'd be cool with that <laughs> because you know pipe so yeah this is uh, just pumping it over of course uh, the vehicle that's pumping from is the pumper. Uh, you just need a pump on the other vehicle to receive it. I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah. And uh, we're just coming up to 100 litres. And uh, let's make it 110. There we go. Not pumping. Cool. That's you done. Let's switch over. Hey, it's Jeb. And he's in the rover. Now we've got a different control panel on here. I wasn't expecting this. I thought it was a bug. It might be a bug. I don't know, or it might just be because it's the receiving vehicle or something, I don't know. But uh, now we've got this, this is the converting UI, and what have we got? Free space for fuel, 12 liters, free space of RCS, 143. Well that's good. Where's the RCS? RCS is, let's, let's see, we're nearly out. Nearly out. So let's uh, RCS conversion. Oh wow, it's a sound effect, I haven't heard that before. That's quite loud, actually. Yeah, that's quite loud. And a little choppy because of uh, fraps, I think. But, um, that's just converting it down into the RCS fuel. And if we can tag that to stop it, and we can just fill up, might as well fill up our, our uh, rocket fuel while we're here. There we go. No space for that. That's really interesting. It didn't make a sound for the fuel, but I made it for the RCS conversion. That's interesting. I'm just going to convert all this down into RCS. Okay, we're done. And what does that get us? That got us nearly a full tank of RCS there, which is cool. Uh, with a crazy rover like this, I actually do recommend running it around on RCS. They're not stable craft at all. And uh, if you're using the uh, cathane pack like this, you can afford to run it around on RCS and then just fill it up with rocket fuel when the vehicle wants to leave. Of course, just be careful on these wheels. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the basic gist. Whoa, shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the basic gist of the... Uh, the cathane related details, the cathane related stuff and uh, we're just going to take a look at one more thing just as a couple of the random parts 
So we're just going to park this guy up and I shall meet you on the next little vehicle to show off that's built with this pack. With the upcoming uh, 0 0.17 release and planets, I'm sure everyone will be digging probes, so I built a very large probe. Uh, this is running on the ion engine, it's got a little RCS tank in there and it's covered in these yellow uh, RCS tanks from it, and it's got these uh, little mounting cylinders. Now, these cylinders, they're not. I'm not using them in their correct form. These are actually little, like, half-meter central hull or hull pieces. The idea being is that when you surround them with these little tanks, they make up one meter, you know? So you've got kind of modularity in what you have. But I noticed that if you try and radially attach them, they just magically appear, like, miles away, as you can see. This is a good, like, four or five meters away, so I just put struts between them to make it look like they're connected. And I made this little probe. And of course, she runs on an ion engine, tons of RCS, she's going into deep space. That's where she's going. One day, she's out here somewhere. This is the reason all that other junk is kind of randomly flying, because I did the maximum fast forward and, um, yeah, everything broke. And another thing that the satellite pack comes with is this really bitching radar, or, you know, just a satellite dish, look at it. It's really nice and detailed. Very nice. That's one thing that they, they have not, they're not skimping on, this detail. Quality of textures and the models, lovely. Now, I love tiny orbiters. That's one of my little things. I always try and make the smallest vehicles. And with this pack I can. This is the tiny little inline, you know, one meter, like, tiny, tiny, tiny fuel tank for the satellite pack and the satellite engine. But we're out of fuel, as you see. We're completely out of fuel. So, and we're in 180 by 150 kilometer. That's why we've got these. Little tiny retro boosters. Uh, in 17, we're actually going to get stock retro boosters. But for now, if you're looking for a good retro booster, it, these are them. I've got this ring of... 3 times 8 which is uh, 24 wow I'm gonna look so stupid if that's wrong 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24 that is 24 wow just <laughs> didn't be counted into math but yeah we're gonna deorbit with these I was going for the kind of Voskhod idea here with the emergency retro booster sort of thing so let's get Bill home in 3, 2, 1 Wow, the sound effects are a lot better when I'm not recording. And as you can see, that's got us on a really nice deorbit. So, uh, parachute's out, and we'll bring this guy back home. But we don't need to watch that. Anyway, here, back in the VAB, not too much to cover now, but just over going over, this is how it's supposed to attach. <laughs> and then uh, the various things go around it. And of course we've got the other parts, the little fold-out lander legs. You can see the little animation there. I don't know whether that's going to come up very well. And here's your sensor. That's your sensor. Your cathane sensor. Uh, your computer. The little controller. Tiny unit. The miner. This big old block. With danger keep clear written on one side. Ah, it's on the inside. Ha! <laughs> the pump. This little square panel and uh, the converter tank. So yeah, this is um, quite the mod pack.